plastic, food packaging and storage was very different. As you can see, there is no plastic in this 19th century kitchen. To keep food fresh, this woman pickles her fruit and veg, and she cures her meat in a chimney over an open fire. When food was preserved, it was often stored in earthenware pottery, which was usually glazed with lead. It was advised to not use these pots to store acidic foods like vinegar. Because if a pot was cracked or unglazed, acidic or greasy contents could be tainted with lead. Unlike plastic, pottery was not disposable. If it broke, it was fixed. Popular books for women featured instructions for mending crockery, and tips included tying pots with string and boiling them in milk. Repairs were also made with lead, egg whites, plaster, and gelatin. New food storage methods were also invented in the 19th century. Machine-made cardboard boxes were invented in 1879, and mass production of cans was perfected in 1880. Wood was also used to store food, though it was sometimes lined with lead, and when contents fermented, they would be poisoned. Because acidic foods reacted to lead in wooden pottery, glass vessels were used to store pickles, vinegars, and sauces. Glass is inert and impermeable so it can come into contact with virtually all food without affecting their flavor. Grocery stores were also different before plastic. Customers were served individually because few foods were pre-packaged. Most goods sat in the open, unrefrigerated and unprotected. Shopkeepers would weigh or measure each item and then wrap it in paper. Shoppers would then take packages home in baskets. Butter was delivered to the store in a large wooden cask. It was removed from the cask by a butter man, who placed smaller blocks on a butter board and divided it into portions. Butter was expensive, so it was common to purify rancid butter by rinsing it in boiling water, milk, or a lime solution. And before plastic milk jugs, shoppers brought their own vessels to the store or the street to be filled. Some places also sold milk by the glass. Milk could only be kept fresh for a few hours, and it was often diluted with water as it wasn't sealed or protected from tampering. Before many foods were prepackaged, customers ordered scoops of flour or sugar and paid for them by the pound. Although brands existed before this time, they weren't very visible. Buying from bulk meant that customers couldn't ask for a product by name. Without prepackaging, customers were also not guaranteed a safe food product. Until 1875, some foods contained dangerous fillers. Chalk was often added to bread, lead was added to mustard, and coffee was mixed with gravel, chicory, and carrots. <laughs> when foods began to be prepackaged in tin cans and cardboard, food safety improved and adulteration of goods declined. Packaging also led to the use of graphics and logos on food products, marking the beginning of branding as we know it. Plastic and packaging haven't just changed the grocery store. They have also changed the way we eat and drink on the go. Today, food trucks and cafes use disposable materials that just weren't available in the 19th century. Eating on the go used to mean sharing cups and spoons with your neighbor. Instead of plastic bottles, people drank water from public drinking cups. A shared cup was available on trains, streets, and schools. It was used and then put back near the water for the next person. These cups were used widely throughout the United States until 1909 when they were found to spread dangerous bacteria. Eating street food also involved sharing cups and saucers. At shellfish stalls, <laughs> vendors set out little saucers of seafood for a penny a plate. Henry Mayhew described a stall in East London that used the same saucers for 50 years. Hot peas were also popular, and they were served in teacups that were used many times throughout the day. People drank coffee on the go in Victorian times, though you would have to stay at the coffee stand while you drank from a mug. Coffee, tea, and cocoa were charged by the mug or the half mug, and as soon as you finished your cup, you would hand it back to be filled for the next person. Meat pies were also a popular street food. Portable and affordable, meat pies were a triumph of food preservation. Meat could be kept longer, baked in a pie, buried in layers of fat. Buying pies was also risky, because if they weren't sealed properly, food poisoning would occur. The most famous poison pie was the Denbydale pie, baked to honor the queen in 1887. The 1,500-pound pie was filled with poultry, rabbits, veal, and pork, but when it was sliced, it was rotten. 
It was given a funeral march and buried in quicklime. But fortunately, the bakers tried again, and the resurrection pie was a success. Unfortunately, food poisoning was common. Deaths from diseased meat was frequent, and the British Medical Journal stated, we shall ever hear of cases of meat poisoning until we have some means of control over the manufacture of tinned meat or the various kinds of pie. Leftovers also caused food poisoning. Even before Tupperware, people saved scraps at the end of a meal. Grease was scraped into a pot, and used tea leaves were put in a bowl. Bits of butter were kept to use again. However, this was before plastic and refrigeration, and many people ate spoiled leftovers. Despite its negative impact on our planet, plastic does help us eat more safely than ever before. Modern packaging protects food from adulteration and helps keep food fresher longer. The grocery store and the dinner table are now safer thanks to the promise of plastic. Thank you.